All right, we're here at my tiny DIY worm bin. And last time we tested the limits of this worm bin. We fed it a lot for being only two weeks old at the time. It was its third feeding. And we wanted to see just how much food these worms could consume. The idea here is just kind of get to their limits. If there's any food left, then we know, okay, that's about what each feeding should look like for a while. So I'm just gonna start to dig in because I'm already seeing some worms here. And I know there was some apples. We had some lettuce stalks in here. We had even potato skins. And right away, we're seeing worms congregating right in the feeding zone. And I'm also noticing my coffee grounds are a little bit chunkier than they have been in the past. And look, right there, there's a baby worm. Hopefully you can see that. He's moving or she's moving a little bit. But just awesome to see a baby like that that anytime you see a baby in your worm bin that means they are reproducing and that is fantastic now these are red wigglers in here and we started with 500 when we started this worm bin actually i think it was 492 but we'll just call it 500 but i'm not seeing any of that previous feeding which is good and this is maybe strawberry leaves i don't know why they don't like the strawberry leaves as much as you know, lettuce or any other kind of green plant, but they don't, because here's another strawberry top leaf. All right, let's keep digging in. I was expecting maybe to see some of the apple cores in here. I think there was at least two. And you can see a little bit more of the white newspaper junk mail. I've started to incorporate that more. I usually am kind of more strictly cardboard, but I'm also trying to get rid of my junk mail that comes in without throwing it in the garbage. This is looking good. This The moisture level is fantastic. It's It kind of sticks together. I don't want to squeeze because there's worms all over here. But it also crumbles, if that makes any sense. No sign of the feeding zone. So I thought we had tested its limits. Well, we tested them, but we didn't find their limits. So we're going to give them even more food this time, based on what I'm seeing here. And we'll get to that corner there. But this is looking good. This is a lot of castings for how young this bin is, 21 days. And again, I know we started with a little bit more of the previous bin material than I normally do, but it's doing good. And I'm seeing worms in every single handful. They are all over the place, which is great. I think 500 is probably a good number, a minimum number to start with in a three gallon tote like this. I think you could easily go up to a thousand in here, no problem which hopefully this will get up to in this uh, round of composting, which will probably take, I say, anywhere from three to four months. We'll see, maybe a little bit longer. But things are looking great in here. Let's get to this corner. It feels a little damp, more damp than the last time that we were in here, which I'm perfectly happy with. Certainly the worms like more moisture. And if you can keep your bin pretty moist without it going anaerobic, then that will benefit the worms they'll eat more and probably produce more too they don't like the dry but i will tell you it's it's probably easier to have too much moisture in a bin just from my experience than it is to you know just kind of have it with a wrung out sponge type of situation i did have a bin go anaerobic when it had too much moisture and you'll know from the smell of it worm bins should not smell at all i don't smell anything if anything you get real up on them you might smell like an earthy smell here is a bunch of worms right here so maybe we've gotten to something and i see an apple seed so telltale sign that this may have been where the apple core was and i'm feeling something a little bit more solid right here maybe this is apple core or just some matted paper but right here is just a happy place for all these worms this is great they are doing really good in here so i think we can start to set up this next feeding zone and we'll just kind of get it all set up now things are pretty bulky in here i'm up to the edge here it's about as high as i like to go so i may have to put just a little bit less bedding than i typically do for a feeding zone but let's make some room in here and I like to make sure it's buried pretty good. Not all the way to the bottom, but pretty deep in there for the feeding. So we've made that. Now let's add some more bedding. 
And I like to add the bedding on the bottom when I can remember. Sometimes I forget because then that will help absorb the food that we're going to feed them. And here's what I had in mind. We've got a whole banana here. We've got a section of banana. We've got some papaya. We've got apples and I think some other stuff, maybe some strawberries or something. But this is a really, really, really big feeding for a tiny worm bin. But we're going to give it a go. They ate the other one and I'm just going to kind of open up this banana. They ate that other one and we're going to see how they do with this one. They're really going to enjoy that. That is a bunch of mushy banana along with this mushy banana. And then we'll just add some color <laughs> with the papaya. A lot of fruity type of fruit here. So we may get some mites, which I guess they're already in there and they would just have a bigger population, but we'll put some of the apple in there and then strawberry and then more banana peel. And then of course, we'll add some of our coffee grounds. That's just another food source for them. There they go. And I actually wanna add some of my tea bags in here. I've been adding this tea bags and these uh, curd coffee filters in my other two bins, which I have two other bins besides this one. I have a vermi hut and an outdoor worm bin. And I do different experiments, that kind of thing. You can subscribe to my channel and you'll be able to see on the playlist the different bins that are in there. And definitely hit like if you enjoy this video. But anyway, in this bin, I'm gonna start adding some of these paper products in there. And we're gonna add some of our grit, which is just pulverized eggshells. And that helps to aid in the worm's digestion because they have a gizzard, but it also helps in my garden. So let's just kind of smush this down a little bit and we will cover it up. We're just going to add a little bit more bedding because I always like to add bedding. You can never have enough bedding really at the beginning phases of a worm bin. And this is, I believe, 21 days in so far. This isn't too bad. This bin is looking really good. If you're following along or started at the same time I did, your bin should look uh, probably similar to this. And if you haven't already, you could probably start upping your feedings if they have consumed the feedings from the last time. If they haven't consumed all the food, you know, the food that you expect them to consume, then, you know, you don't have to hold off on a feeding, but give a, a lighter feeding until you get to the point where they are consuming all the food that you give them because they'll also eat this bedding. Eventually, they're going to eat all the bedding, but you don't really need to worry about starving your, your worms. It's more important not to overfeed them they can eat the bedding no problem but I think we've gotten everything done that we need to do in here we'll add the newspaper and I hope everybody is having a great day and happy vermicomposting everybody take care now